The liturgy and the service folder begins on page three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal, King of glory, Son of justice, born of Mary. Jesus, wonderful counselor, strong Lord, eternal God, Prince of Peace. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus, most powerful, patient, obedient, gentle and humble of heart, loving all who are pure in heart. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus, God of peace, source of life, pattern of holiness, Friend of all, our God and our refuge. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, brother of the poor, treasure of the faithful, good shepherd, true light, inexhaustible wisdom, boundless love, our way and our life. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, joy of the angels, king of the patriarchs, Master of the Apostles, Teacher of the Evangelists, Strength of the Martyrs, Light of every witness to the truth, Crown of all the saints. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the, in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christmas prophecy, Isaiah 52, 7 to 17. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, the voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy, 
for eye to eye they see and return to the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, your waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has com comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Christmas letter, Hebrews 1, 1 to 6. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the first born into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as if the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Perhaps you have seen the man with the sign, the placard. Maybe you've seen him in real life visiting a big city in the streets. Or maybe you've just seen a picture of the man or a cartoon or a comic of the man with the sign. Usually, whether it's a picture or a depiction, the man is kind of like John the Baptist, kind of wild, camels, hair for clothing, eats live locusts and wild honey, maybe looks a little bit homeless. And the sign that he bears says, the end is near. You've seen or heard about the man with the prophetic sign. The end is near. And that would go well with uh, Matthew's gospel when Jesus comes in chapter 4 or when John the Baptist starts in chapter 3. The end is near. Repent. Repent. But I'm wondering if you've seen the picture of the man with another sign. The sign that says, the beginning is near. If we hear John the Gospel writer correctly today, from John chapter 1, it's the man with the sign that says, the beginning is near that should grab our attention today. Because according to John, the beginning is indeed near. Oh, we sang it in the hymn that we just sang there. What Adam lost, none could reclaim, and paradise was barred until the second Adam came to mend what sin had marred. For when the time was full and right, God sent his only Son. He came to us as life and light, and our redemption won. The beginning is near. Many adults, and not a few children, are breathing sighs of relief this morning. Because the parties that characterize the Christmas season, well, they're pretty much ended. And finally, we can get a little bit of rest. And the presents under the tree, finally, by and large, they're open. And we can get a little rest from the anticipation and spend the afternoon playing with toys. But there's more to the beginning is near than parties and presents. Because the beginning is near is about God's promise. In the beginning was the Word. And when Jesus comes, there is the Word again, promised from long ago, now fulfilled. The beginning is near, and yet, this is the time of highest paradox. Highest paradox. We think it should be the end, but it's the beginning. And the beginning puts an end to all the things and all the ways and all the striving of the past, and how very good that is. And there's been a struggle going on, a search, if you will, from the first beginning. I think it's the search for intimacy, closeness. And I think it's a search that all of us can identify with if at some time or some level this wanting to be close. And yet as we come close, it might be fret with problems 
That's what Adam and Eve thought in the garden. They wanted to be like God, close to him. And yet what it meant for them was certain death and destruction. Not only their death and destruction, but yours and mine too. And that quest for intimacy or closeness to the wrong things, well, that's called sin. And then the first man is true. The end is near. This paradox, this search, this struggle for intimacy with God, with one another, this is a hallmark of our lives. God sees that. He understands that from the start because he's the one who created us, who knows us better than we even know ourselves. We may not recognize that search and struggle for intimacy, for closeness to one another, to be fully known. But God knows it and he sees it. And into our dysfunction, he sends a paradox. He fulfills the promise of himself. He comes in the closeness of a child. Flesh of flesh is born. God of God, we confess. in the closeness and proximity of a Judean village and household where the image is not of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, just them by themselves, but the image truly is Mary giving birth and Joseph there barely surrounded by family. Lots of people, when we think of the nativity scene, we should think of a room full of people, not just Mary, Joseph, and Jesus as icons, separate, distant, removed, but closeness, smells and sounds, touching. It's a paradox this intimacy that God chooses with his creation, both at the manger and at the cross, that we who would draw close to God and one another, but cannot, except in a broken or failing or faltering way, he who is most high and most holy, who should at all costs remove himself from his rebellious creation. He does what God does, and he draws near. He does what Jesus did in Luke chapter 10 with the lepers. Remember them? Everybody else would have pulled back, kept their distance. But what does Jesus do with these horribly afflicted terribly contagious, he draws near and he touches that which is ill and broken and sick and dysfunctional. And he himself does not become contaminated, but he himself brings healing and hope, and hope to these. And for them, the beginning is there. That's what God does. That's what Jesus does. At the manger, at the cross, everywhere in between, and everywhere since then. Jesus begins this grace and this mercy and this hope and this forgiveness and this healing and this divine intimacy and closeness with those he loves the most. Such is the paradox of Christmas, God's proximity, God's presence.
brothers and sisters, the beginning is nearer now than when we first believed. Thank God for his new beginning in us, for us, in his son, Jesus. Won't you stand with me to pray? O Lord our God, thou didst desire to dwell not only in heaven, but also with us on earth, to be not only exalted and great, but like us, lowly and small, not only to rule, but to serve us, not only to be God for eternity, but to be born, to live, and to die. For us. In thy dear Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, thou hast given us no less than thine own self, so that we might belong wholly to thee. This concerns us all, although no one of us has earned it. What remains then for us but to be amazed, to rejoice, to be thankful? to hold fast to that which thou hast done for us. We beseech thee, grant that this may become reality among us and in all at this hour. Grant that in honorable, open, and willing prayer, and in song, speaking, and hearing, we may become a true Christmas congregation, and in great hunger, may experience the true communion of the Lord's Supper. For you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up, uh, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your one and only Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Behold the beautiful paradox. For our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for yours. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the remission of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now this peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this new beginning, strengthen in you his grace, his mercy, his peace, and his presence the whole year long. Go in peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.